Roleplay presents Encounter Con. Okay. Okay. Are we on? Are we on the edge here, Dad? Yes, we are. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I just was speaking to all of you, but now this time joined by the lovely, wonderful players that we have today for Call of Cthulhu Atlantis. I am Miria, I use she, they pronouns, and I am going to be your keeper of arcane lore today as we delve deep into the wondrous mysteries of the Elder Tour that is Florida. Let's go ahead and start with some quick player introductions. Just tell us your name, what pronouns you use, and yeah, then we can get started on the game. And we will begin with Lydia. Who is muted? Alas. <laughs> That's because I muted myself in the wrong VMix call. Uh, I'm Lydia. I'm half <laughs> first hermit. <laughs> I was like, huh, Anna's looking a bit echoey. No, that's just me. Uh, I'm a professional too, who didn't just wake up um, because it's worth getting up early for this particular game, Call of Cthulhu. And I'm going to play Margalotta von Eisvig. We, uh, yeah, who is, who is, who is a writer um, of certain adult fiction. So Margalotta is definitely a pen name. She is uh, 59 years old and she has been 59 for the last nine years. And she's, a treasure hopefully excellent excellent moving right along to evan yeah i'm evan i'm at maori nerd on twitter and twitch and today i'll be playing rupert trotten and an esquire i'm the heir to trotten traders global shipping company and Currently, father is in St. Augustine doing a deal with his boat. So uh, I'm here to play tennis and drink pims. Hi. Pleasure. You yeah, have a very good time, I am sure. And Absolutely. Laura, tell us a little bit about yourself and who you'll be bringing Hi, to everybody. the table today. Hi, everybody. I'm Laura. Uh, she, her. I am playing Elizabeth Jackson, a Pittsburgh native that recently moved to Florida about four years ago, is a extreme book collector and likes to collect the rarest books that she can find and hopefully open her own bookstore if, if she survives. And Colin, tell us a little bit about yourself and your character, please. Yeah, hi, I'm Colin Kelly. Uh, that's, that's my Twitter, Colin underscore dot C underscore Kelly. Um, and I will be playing a, a Reginald Buchanan, a collector of oddities and trinkets, and also a salesman of trinkets. You want to buy any? Mm -hmm. I have this pocket watch. It, it, don't mind that it takes backwards. It's a pocket watch. It's neat. I, uh, both I and the character use he, him pronouns as well. You have certainly come to the right place to peddle strange curiosities. And finally, the lovely Chai. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your character. Hi, I'm Chai, she, her pronouns. I am going to be playing Amelia Charles, who is a very small, feisty, like down on her luck journalist who wrote a story that she knows is true, but other people didn't really think so. So now she's trying to prove that she was right. And you know, maybe catch break and get famous. So she also uses she, her pronouns. And yeah, we're gonna have some fun playing some Call of Cthulhu. I'm excited. Very good, very good. So just real quick disclaimer before we get started. This place in a world very similar to our own, but things might be a little bit uh, different than you remember them from our historical record, just cause. Um, oh yes, and thank you, Lydia, for reminding me to shout out our amazing sponsors. So we have some great sponsors for the channel this season. 
not a stream unless you forget to say something that you're supposed to. Uh, we are sponsored by Modiphius, who make the amazing uh, Star Trek Adventures TTRPG, which we have a uh, ongoing campaign of on Thursdays. They have just come out with their new Klingon source book, which is available for pre-order right now. Um, we are also sponsored by Helmgast, who make the creepy cult RPG GM'd by Penny for a Tale on our channel. And that is absolutely amazing. That is our adult horror show. So if you ever really just wanted to uh, deep delve into the delve deep, deep delve, yeah, into the dark secrets of the world, you can do it with that. Um, we are also sponsored by, let's see, uh, Maychan Press, who did our uh, Dark Matter campaign earlier, and World Anvil, which, in the words of Charlie, is a remarkable resource. All of our GMs use it to um, do world building and keep all of the like information that they get out to their players and all of that sort of thing collated and in order. And it is a great place. We have lots of world anvils for shows on our channel. So if you're interested in the lore, go ahead and check that out. <laughs> so let us begin. And our adventure today takes us to the city of St. Augustine, Florida. The year is 1929, just before the stock market crash precipitating the Great Depression begins. Something that uh, all of our characters here are blissfully unaware of at this point. And they have all been invited to an academic conference at the Ponce de Leon Hotel a once grand building that has seen better days, much like St. Augustine itself. Once a haven for wealthy New Englanders looking to escape the frigid winter, the boomtown of the early 1920s was eclipsed later in the decade by railroads to the southern cities of Miami and Palm Beach. St. Augustine still has its history and its famous Bridge of Lions, though, and like many old places, it has its secrets. Now, all of you are traveling here, as I said, to be part of this academic conference where Dr. Edward Garth will be delivering the keynote address. Dr. Garth is uh, somewhat renowned among the sort of fringe archeologist circles that you all tend to run in. He's one of those people that like has a degree, but it wasn't really from a exactly legitimate institution, but he has dedicated his life's work and purpose to the search for the lost city of Atlantis, something labeled in myths and legends, rumored to be located between the lost pillar of Hercules. Nobody quite knows exactly where the city lies, but he claims that he will be revealing its location in his keynote speech. So, you have all boarded a train from your various locations down to St. Augustine, a city by the beach, a very old city, uh, home to one of the oldest European settlements in the United States. There is a 500-year-old Spanish fort on the coast, and a lighthouse, barber shop stripes, white and black around it. And I think we'll begin with a little bit of a character intro thing. We are all sitting in the same train car together on your way down. What are you doing? What are you talking about? What are you looking forward to? You can go whenever you like. Well, this is all very exciting, isn't it? I can't wait to, to hear what the Doctor has to talk about. I've been fascinated with the sea and its mysteries ever since I was a child, but but now this is, there's something real, something, something to sink our teeth in, possibly. I don't know if he's a crackpot or not, but what do you think? What do you all think? Margalotta looks up from writing notes. Uh, well, it, even if he's a crackpot, those are usually the most exciting ones, aren't they? Absolutely. I hope we can tell me something about this and you reach in his trench coat and pull out like the head of a triton. It's all like rusted and old. And it says, oh, 
Uh, I was told it was a fish man or something of the sort. Fish man? Sure she's just going to look... A merman or a merperson? Sorry, Karen. Merperson, fish man, not really sure. Most, if anything, it probably would lead to Atlantis. A fish man? How much do we know about fishmen? Apparently they use um, tridents. You could make a, a roll if you like. Roll a cult or archaeology. I'm good at a cult. That is a on the ten. off chance we have a, a 10. On the off chance we have viewers new to the system, as I am myself, hello, I've never GM'd this before, uh, the characters are looking to roll under their skill numbers. So I'm assuming that that is a under your skill. Yes, it is a, I can't remember cool. the term for like the highest degree of success, but it's that, because I just said gotcha. a cult. Can, can we try else? as well? Oh, yes. Yeah, sure. I'd love to try. Ex- uh, that is a definite no. That's a 73 out of 45, so. Yeah. <laughs> what was the skill? Was it history or occult, did you say? Uh, archaeology or occult. Archaeology. Archaeology or occult. Um, oh, no, dude, it's a 44. That's out of five <laughs> just looks at so uh, yeah reggie uh just based off of you know your various readings and spending a lot of time trying to uh, track down these strange curiosities and oddities you've never seen a fish man but you've heard enough about them and you've collected enough things that are supposedly used by them uh to know that the fishmen are just like a another word for the sort of uh beings that inhabited the ancient city of atlantis something like humans but perhaps they had gone down um a different pathway of uh evolutionary biology because of the way that their culture was so focused on survival beneath the sea. Um, You would know not too much about their, you know, their biology, but you would know that they have, uh, they created this sort of strange webbed armor for themselves. You've uh, found things that you think might be um, scraps of it before, or you've at least tried to pass them off as scraps of fish people armor. There's definitely something there. Well, uh, the fish people inhabited Atlantis. Uh, the kind of they're like people, but fishy. The best way I can put it. Uh, they have gills. Are they probably. fishy or gills? Do you know anything more about their anatomy, by any chance? Uh, well, they were armor it's kind of webbed uh webbed. do i know more about their anatomy i, I bet it's just the extent from what it is like all right fins fish people you see uh, in my first book i will have my plucky young adventurer off with a with a with a scientist of course um, handsome but very very strict and square and boring but some readers are into that but i'm considering that in the continuous series she might actually fall in love with one of the fishermen so anything you'd tell me about their anatomy is much appreciated i haven't done much <laughs> research in that inspiration of yes. a good name yes the shape of water like a fantastic name. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> I don't think anyone's copyrighted that yet. I will write that down. Thank you, young man. Oh, I say, Ethel, you are a caution. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, you know it. One of my biggest fans right there, aren't you? That's yes, quite... Oh. <laughs> 
Elizabeth's just sitting there reading her book and just going, huh, interesting, you know, flips the page and kind of jogs down some notes in her journal that's on her lap and she's going, huh, oh, okay, that's fine, yep. Mm -hmm. She's she's just going to keep reading, kind of listen in bits and pieces, she, and she'll you'll hear her say, oh, fish anatomy, okay. Uh -huh. What are you reading then, dear? Is it something in, exciting? Is it something exhilarating? Uh, it's, it's nothing very ex exhilarating, Miss. Uh, it's just uh, a book on uh, pirates and uh, this legend of Atlantis. I I, I don't know. I'm just trying to do my research here before we go to this conference. I'm very excited about this. The pirates? That's something for book three. <laughs> pirates? Pirates, you say? Pirates? Well, yeah, do you know? Any pirates. You should find pirates with fancy hats and cats and pirates, possibly start, some, you'll like some trench coats. Coats. I'm not sure. I have pirate flag, and he pulls out a pirate flag for his trench coat, and it's adorned with a dragon skull and crossbones. Ooh. Is this a Ooh, for How much? Mila's really? just sitting there, like, tapping a pen, like, on her notebook, just tap, tap, tap. Like, and just, like, this, like, I have to find out as much as, you know, like, this will prove it. Like, this is... Right, right, like, and just like furiously, like scribbling, like questions and stuff, and tapping, like trying, like th this, this is it. This is what I need. This will prove it all, and just like tap, tap, writing some more. What, what are you writing there? Just, I, just questions to like details that I want to like pay attention for in the speech like I'm I wrote a story on it I he's got to have way more information and I just need to know what he knows so I can write an even better story I'm gonna get published and I'm gonna get a job at the times this is this is it Okay. Well, if if you ha have done some research in that regard, can uh, can anyone fill me in? Uh, what exactly to expect from this conference? I was invited, but I never really properly read uh, any of the scientific stuff. To be perfectly honest, I just take sparks of inf inspiration wherever they catch me. And there seem to be a lot of interesting people on that conference. Y you included, my my friends. I'm not sure exactly, like, what else he knows, but, like, Atlantis' myth of, like, astounding proportions. So, like, there's there's going to be some juicy details for you for your stories, for sure. Like, well, you're, you're gonna, the food and the drink is usually quite good. Here. So, even if, even if we do not find out anything too exciting... I've been to a couple of these. Just eat as much as you can, drink as much as you can. That usually also provides some fun, inspirational stories, as long as, you know, it, what happens at conferences stays at conferences. Yes, yes. Well, for me personally, uh, father was meant to attend, um, but he's so very busy that he uh, sent me. and. Uh, I intend to eat and drink and meet as many interesting people as I can, but also um, he wants me to look out if there's any real substance to this to this theory this that the doctors come up with the professor. Then um, it could be a branch of tourism that our, that our shipping company could maybe run trips to Atlantis. I'm not sure, but I hope to meet plenty of interesting people, like a good sales, of course. I, I I honestly don't know why I was I'm coming. I, I know I've met the professor a bit, uh, and I'm just uh, very very excited to come. 
and I'm going to still scribble on my, in my journal a little bit here about what I'm reading in my book. So. Just let well, loose is my advice. I'm hoping he can tell me that this trident is real. If it is, I can make a fortune. At this point is when you hear the woo woo of the train whistle and you feel it just sort of start to slow down as it's pulling into the station. Uh, the might of the industrial titan Henry Flagler, you would all know, has uh, kind of opened up the state of Florida to a lot more travel, bringing in tourists, bringing in business and all that sort of thing. Although his construction of the railroad has constantly been plagued by like strange issues with swamp draining and engineering failures and strange creatures that have come out of the scrub at night. But as you pull into the station, everything seems fairly normal. It's a basic train station. There's a, a lot of buildings with those sort of terracotta fired uh, tile roofs, things like that. People milling about, wearing their travel clothes, carrying suitcases, uh, some of whom look like they might be there for business, some definitely for uh, more leisurely pursuits, things like that. As you uh, exit the train, you see the two men standing together and holding on to these little like leaflets and, and things like that. And they're trying to like flyer them out to people and they're just like, change is coming, change is near, prepare yourselves, it is coming soon. Margalotta hasn't properly heard that, has been distracted and is giving them a couple of coins. Here's some change, love, there you go, hope you get better soon. <laughs> and uh, one of them just presses the pamphlet into your hand and it just looks you dead in the eyes. And, Thank you, my sister. And then they just nod at you. Oh, oh, that, I got a pamphlet. Oh, they, did they, they didn't touch you, did they? They clasp your hands, no, uh, but, you know. And they, they uh, you open up the pamphlet. That's right. Yeah, yeah I, I read. And it's got some uh, kind of inscrutable drawings on it of what looks like just strange cylinders coming up out of the waves. Um, it's got some inscrutable writing, you know, sort of like, beware, change is coming soon, everything returns to the tide, just as the tide it's returns honest. to the shore. And I've heard rumors about people in Florida, but they are really a strange bunch, aren't they? Yes, yes. What 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 does what does it say about stuff returning to the t t tides? Apparently everything does, my love. Apparently everything does. Would you like to have a look? Uh, please. No, no. I'll just give her the pamphlet. Afraid change okay. is coming soon. Grab the is a pamphlet here and you. kind of look through it. Um, and Rupert will lean over and uh, lean over your shoulder and sort of uh, look at it as well. Probably. A little bit too close for comfort, but you're gonna he feel wow. a quick jab of your uh, of the elbow into your gut oh, from uh, Elizabeth. I'm sorry. Oh, what was that for? Just reading the pamphlet. Too close. T too close. Uh, okay, fair enough. Did you note it? Steps back a bit. I promise I'll, I'll let you read it here in a second. I'm almost done. Here we go. And I'm going to hand it over to uh, Rupert. Thank you. Hmm. Yes. Pillars. Interesting. Tides. Change. Hmm. Could be a coincidence. I'm not sure. It could just be hocus pocus. Anyone? You want to read it? Uh... 
And as you're passing around this pamphlet and just discussing these sort of cryptic warnings hidden uh, within, we have just hit our first retweet goal, which means someone is going to lose a d6 worth of sanity points. Or quit walking. No. Since uh, Margolotto was the first person to uh, take the pamphlet, why don't you roll a d4 for me? And we'll see who is going to be the most disturbed by these strange prognostications in this pamphlet. That would be a two. Okay, so Elizabeth, you will uh, lose one <laughs> d6 of sanity points there. I'll go ahead and let you roll that. Okay. Um, I think... Oh crap, I lost five sanity. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see that um, on the back of the pamphlet where there's the sort of like, this was printed in this year and written by this person, an address that is familiar to you. But the interesting thing is that this is actually for a legitimate business. This is for a legitimate antiquarian book dealer here in the city. Um, and it just says, first left near Marie's house, down the alleyway. And previously you might have thought nothing of such a strange message, but seeing that address as a place that you have done business with and a place that you have sourced your old books from gives you pause. It makes you feel uneasy. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, there, there's a, a bit of a address on the back. Uh, You okay, darling? It looks like you've seen a ghost. Uh, the, that address is a, a a place where I done the business before. On the back of the pamphlet. Uh, how is how is it even? What? How is it even possible? This is quite a coincidence. Uh, I I don't know. Were they as strange as these don't. two young gentlemen here when you did business with them? I mean, uh, I, I, it's, it, I've, it, it wasn't a very pleasant business, if you understand what I'm tr trying to say. I really don't. You have to elaborate. Uh, uh, I, 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 I can not explain to you. You don't have to go into it, but you are among friends. And I would say uh, you are maybe tangentially aware of these two young men, but most of your business has been with the proprietor of the shop, uh, mm -hmm. Miss Dean, Miss Lyra Dean. She is the person who owns the shop. It's been in the family for generations. Most of your business dealings have been with her. I'm not too, too familiar with the personal details of the flyer pamphleteers. I just, I just know I've, I've dealt with a woman before, but not with the two gentlemen that handed you that pamphlet. That's, uh, that's what's strange. I, I, what I, do they I, do? I don't know those I can't, gentlemen. I can't quite decipher this strange scrabbling. They really should improve their handwriting. It's very rude to give people things to read with handwriting like that. Maybe There's they're a lack like of education. new hires. And like they're still training or something. They could be new. They're probably I've new never kids. seen them before. There's something about them. It's I, I hard to find good help these days. Oh, tell Shall me about we... it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Sorry, strange to see you traveling without your manservant, Rupert. That's well, I'm, I'm, on a, I'm on an adventure. Sometimes you have to, you know, just break free. 
branch out. Be free and loose. Hmm. I can respect that. Exactly. Shall we head off to the conference then, my dearies? I think so. Please. Maybe that phrase, change is coming soon. It's really ambiguous, isn't it? I mean, I could have something different for breakfast and change is coming soon. Well, then they were correct. I mean, I, guess. I mean, I've, I've, I've heard that a lot when I lived up home, but not very often. And I think okay, they might have been a little bit amusing. They just head off, and I will definitely take Rupert's arm yeah. because I'm an old woman. And he's a handsome young man. Oh, of course. No other That's reason, good. I'm sure. <laughs> so you make your way off to the Ponce de Leon Hotel. Um, it is very near to the coast. You actually have a pretty decent view of the ancient Castillo de San Marcos, which is the Spanish fort there. Um, it's made out of coquina, like a lot of buildings in this area. It's this sort of improvised mortar that is made out of ground up seashells that then get put into, you know, the sides of buildings and things like that. And the outside of the hotel is very impressive like that. Same with the fired tile roofs. And there are a lot of these giant live oak trees just growing outside with Spanish moss, if anybody has ever seen, it just kind of looks like a curly, fuzzy, long tendrils, gray moss hanging off the branches of the trees, floating in the wind. Um, it is winter, but this being Florida, it's still a pretty, like, balmy 70 degrees or so. It's actually quite nice, and you can see um, one of those, like, hand-painted banners it's just like Atlantean Society annual conference and a sign pointing you towards the registration table at the entrance of the hotel. So you go in and sitting there behind the table is a woman with her hair braided in two long red braids. She got a name tag on that uh, shows she is the proprietor of the hotel and her name appears to be Ethel. And she's like, oh, hello, hello, my dears. You must be here for the conference, eh? Well, 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 please come in. Uh, just sign your names in the book and uh, please help yourself to refreshments. And indeed, next to the uh, Registration table is a, is a uh, table that is just groaning under the weight of pastries and buns. There's um, that ambrosia dish that you make by cutting up oranges, which of course Florida is famous for. Very sweet. And she's just like, oh, come, come, come here. You can just put your names down here and uh, wear, wear these and just uh, make yourselves comfortable while they are getting ready for the big keynote tonight. Could I perhaps interest you in a, a trinket or a curio? Uh, you seem like you would like this. You know, pull out a tiny little silver icon of a raven. Oh. Oh, oh, oh very interesting. Um, uh, wh what does it do, precisely? Well, uh, it's said to give you good luck. And it's... Well, well, once a day when you call upon it, it will change your day for the better. Hmm. Oh, you, you wouldn't happen to have a second one of those, would you? I do have a dear friend that always says, uh, one raven's for sorrow, but two for joy. I would hate to have just a single one and uh, bring bring about destruction in my head. <laughs> I don't have another raven, but I do have, and I'll pull out a tiny little silver skull. <laughs> I do have this. Oh! Oh, what, what, what does that do? The same thing. You can make your always be all of this. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'll have you go ahead and make a. Let's just do a persuade roll to see how how much she's buying, Good how much this. she's picking up, what you're putting down here. <laughs> Success. Forty-seven, needing to fifty. Yeah. All right. 
So she'll be like, oh, yes, very much. Thank you. And how, how much did you say? And she just passes over, you know, probably a little bit overpriced, I'd imagine, relative to the real value of these items. But uh, I forget $19, $20, each. That yeah, one. that's we're just rolling with it. I will give you one money, my dear. <laughs> now, please, please help yourself <laughs> to the food. And there are there are people uh, sort of walking about in the um, uh, typical caterer and like maid outfits of the time with some sort of frilly white caps things over. And it, it seems like she runs a pretty professional establishment, and they offer you some. You know, beverages, uh, little appetizers, things like that. What do you eat? What do you drink? Rupert would go up to Ethan and say, Ah, hello. Uh, Rupert Trottington Esquire. Um, I believe my father would have uh, booked the uh, one of the large suites, possibly a honeymoon suite, I'm not sure. Um, can you have someone take up my, my baggage for me, please? My, my luggage is here. Um, be careful, there's uh, some delicate items in there. I don't, and please don't crush the linen. Um, yes, uh, sign, sign, sign. And um, yeah, I'll go over, yes, yeah, so the pastries are delicious, thank you. Oh, honeymoon sweet, you say? Oh, is this your wife? And she turns to uh, Margalata. Oh my. <laughs> oh, I wish, oh, I wish, dear Ethel. <laughs> no, no, just all very good friends, very good friends. Uh, pastries, you say, Rupert? I'll join you. Fabulous. Margo, Margolotta will um, ravage the pastries table. It's not too early um, for Pims, is it? It's never too early for Pims. They have scotch. Uh, yes, oh, they do. Oh. It is a full. It is a full bar, and it is an open bar in the fine tradition of many academics conferences don't hit the mute button in the middle of a sentence um, <laughs> in the function of many academic conferences the uh the libations flow freely and so, you will notice coffee. that margolotta is having a goal having a target and that is get as much food and she will fill her pockets with it and get as wasted as quickly as possible like she has no reputation to lose here she's she's here for the fun Uh, Elizabeth, go for it. Okay, Elizabeth's gonna just come up to Ethel, sign her name, and say, uh, "I just want some water, and uh, I'll just take one of these pastries, thank you." And kind of skittle at all uh, somewhere a little away, and sit down and her book a little bit more, and put her journal down on that ta on a table close by, and start doodling in the journal that she has. You sit there, uh, kind of taking it all in and watching the uh, various conference goers come in, d different people in, in various uh, degrees of academic or questionably academic dress. There's a lot of tweed vests milling about despite the Florida heat, gather some people coming down from more northern climates who don't necessarily know how to dress for the weather here. And a couple of people dressed in uh, what you would describe as a bit more explorer type setup, you know, like khaki, lots of pockets, the odd pith helmet held under the elbow. And as you're taking it all in, a woman comes up to you with uh, long, dark auburn hair, wearing immaculately tailored black suit and a uh, little brooch at the throat. She's a... Elizabeth? I'm gonna kind oh. of put down my book and go, huh? What? Oh, yes. I thought that was you. Uh, it's Miss Dean, Lyra Dean, from the bookshop. Oh, oh. hello, Miss Dean. How you doing? Very well, I recognize your description from the letters that we've been exchanging. What brings you all the way down here? Uh, just 
uh, looking around it, I was gonna actually come by your store later on. Uh, but, uh, I got invited to this conference. I, I still trying to figure out how I got invited. I mean, I've met the professor once or twice, but other than that, it was more well, this is the sort than of... anything. Well, this is the sort of thing that he'll do, he'll do anything he can to get people in seats, just so that he's not addressing an entirely empty room. Poor man. I feel a little bit like his uh, days might be... Well, his glory days might be a little bit over, if you know what I'm saying, but um, I'm here as a no, favor. He's an old friend, loyal customer of the shop, and uh, yes... There were those there were those books that he needs to uh, still pay me for, but yeah, well, you know. Oh, which reminds me, I do have that uh, geography codex that you had uh, put on hold. So if you'd like oh. to swing by at any point, we can uh, you know talk a little bit of shop. Oh, yes, about. yes, yes. And I actually have a couple things. books of myself. I think you asked Excellent. for Excellent. some stuff. I think you asked for some stuff from uh, Pittsburgh. Is that what? But Pittsburgh or Boston? I forget where you asked from. Yes, yes, indeed. Any, any, and all you'd be willing to uh, provide. You see, the professor claims that uh, the city of Atlantis is to be found somewhere here in the southern waters of the Atlantic Ocean. But a lot of my research has taken me more towards the Massachusetts Bay area. It's a bit of a professional disagreement that we've had for some time, if you will. But uh, you know. It's always a little fun to argue with the old man when he's in his cups. You... I was going to ask you, dear, did you by chance hire any gentlemen? Any gentlemen? No, no. Just just me working at the shop, you know. Uh, every so often I think about maybe getting somebody for the summer season just so that I don't have to deal with the tourists myself. But uh, honestly, there's not terribly much money to be had and selling old antiquated books it's really rather a niche hit and the store doesn't need more employees why do you ask uh I... now does rupert still have the uh, pamphlet or does uh um, did, it, did rupert give it back to elizabeth i think i passed it around but it probably would have come back to you Okay, I'm gonna pull out the pamphlet and show her the address if it's on the back, still. Uh, oh, and say, they, 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 had this, they had this address on this pamphlet, two gentlemen did, and, and I just, it struck me odd. It kind of gave me a, huh. a bit of a spook. And Very I know in our letters you said you, it was just you working, so. Uh, two bearded fellows, right? Kind of mysterious, a little bit haggard looking. Yes. That's them, like right? The... Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. I seem to recall them putting down a deposit for using some of my printing materials for these leaflets. I can't think why they would have put the address on the back. But, yes, we, we've had some interaction. Mostly just keep themselves to themselves, though. Kind of mutter to each other a bit, but um, no, they don't. They don't work for me. I just, I just let them use my printing materials and help them distribute. Small presses gotta look out for each other. Um, well, anyway, darling, it was very, very good to actually meet you in real life, but I have to yes. go and get some networking done. You know, you imagine that uh, this is... Yes, and I'll, one of I'll stop by the store later and you and I can talk shop. Sounds fantastic. Thank you so much. And she'll just kind of like give you a pat on the shoulder and walk away. And Elizabeth is just going to kind of go, uh, okay. And just kind of start writing in her journal again. <laughs> Uh, of, of what she was told and everything she's going to write about the two gentlemen not working for the girl or for the woman and uh and say and if you look if somebody would look in the journal it says investigate later <laughs> reggie amelia what are you all up to 
Reginald is, he probably has a few snacks and then goes to start trying to pawn off all of his, maybe, worthless, maybe they're magical, he probably doesn't know. Uh, it's a little uh, pawn off his trinkets to the various uh, convention goers. Uh, Amelia is probably, she went to the refreshments and is probably having some lovely mimosa and ambrosia salad and heaping things from the cheese plate <laughs> onto a plate while, like, just lis walking around, like, just listening to all the other people that are here for the conference and, like, you know, seeing what people might know and also, like, just being very interested in the um, differences, like, between research being northern and southern seeing like where people kind of stand on where things might be I'm just seeing what everyone else knows and making notes while stuffing her face with ambrosia good good excellent and as the sort of social hour preliminary introductions beginning of this conference draws to a close uh, you see as a very uh, tall, muscular, somewhat elderly man, maybe about like 75 years old, white hair, um, a goatee and a mustache trimmed to a point right along the chin, uh, wearing a very sort of distinguished suit and tie, takes the podium as the lights dim and somebody... Actually, Mrs. Frith, the owner of the hotel, rolls out an old slide projector kind of thing as we get ready to settle in the keynote. He takes the stand. Good evening, my friends. Most of you all know me, and uh, those of you who don't, I'm sure, will have plenty of opportunity to talk about our various theories over the bar later tonight assorted muffled laughter from the audience but for those of you who have not had the pleasure of meeting yet my name is dr edward garth and i have made it my life's work to study the origins locations of the lost city of atlantis it is no mere myth i tell you i don't need to convince the people in this room but what i do wish for you to believe is that I have seen it with my own two eyes. Yes, the city of Atlantis is not in the northerly climes of Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and New York, as some of my esteemed colleagues have said. It is, in fact, just beneath the watershed here in Florida, off the coast, very near to where we are sitting now. And at this point, Mrs. Frith is sending some of the negatives through the slide projector. Could I please have everybody roll a spot hidden, please? Success. That is a okay. hard success. Hard success. success. Okay. That's a fail. I am busy with the pastries. Well, Elizabeth had a hard success. And Reggie and... Oh. Sorry, I... Never mind. I had just regular uh, success here. Regular success for Amelia. Okay. So you see on the slides going through this projector, and these are all in kind of strange faded sepia tones, keeping with the photography of the time. Well, it looks like these winding passages of caverns and tunnels, um, looking as though they've been burrowed into the sea floor with some sort of mechanical device 
And as you're looking at this, Dr. Garth is like, the wonders of the Atlantean technology, which has not been accessed by those of mere Terran origin, you can see that they have uh, used these great mining devices in order to build themselves a home beneath the floor of the ocean. Whereas people had previously suspected Atlantis to be a floating island of sorts, I say Atlantis is also a network of tunnels beneath the ocean floor, which allows the Atlanteans to lie low during our modern times, escaping all but the most hardy of photographers and adventurers. Now, this being an anthropological project of great sensitivity, I was not able to capture any of their faces on film out of respect for their culture. But I was able to find, and then we go to the next slide, and you see in another monochrome, actually Reggie would be the one to recognize what this is. Those fish people armor that you think Maybe you found a scrap of before. Looks an awful lot like this exosuit kind of thing. It's got a little bit of a sheen to it with sort of cords and ropes going around forming limbs, uh, reinforced plating, things like that. It looks very similar to an insect carapace and because of your familiarity with those scraps and trinkets that you like to sell you're pretty sure that this matches that thing that you claimed mm. was part of the fish people now what i propose dr garth goes on is a great joining of our forces, an expedition, if you will, to the lost city itself, where we may make contact with the Atlanteans, perhaps provide some sort of exchange of culture and technology. We could reach great heights together, unprecedented in this world. And as he flips through, just going through uh, different pictures of what appear to be these huge caverns that have been drilled out of the whole of the ocean floor. There are different pockets of water and air. Looks like uh, the Atlanteans are pretty easily able to move freely between these spheres of water that contain fish and aquatic life, plant life, all of that sort of thing. Um, the rooms, the cavernous rooms, where you could walk on dry land appear to be illuminated by these strange glowing orbs just hovering slightly below the ceiling. But all of this to say that I could drone on and on, as some of us may do yet at this conference, about the marvels of the city of Atlantis, about how wonderful it is, about the excitement of recapturing that platonic past. But what I could never replace that with, what could never really replace, is experiencing it yourself firsthand. So I would like to invite all of you, if you like, to join me in attempting our first large scale contact with the Atlanteans. I have chosen people who are attending this keynote address because I believe that you have what it takes to understand what is going on beneath the surface of the ocean. Your minds are open, your skills sharp. Your curiosity, I hope, peaked. As he says this, Elizabeth, in the back of one of the photos. You know, he mentioned that there are not many pictures of the Atlanteans themselves, but you see something, just you, that looks like a humanoid shaped figure, like a shadow in the background. The face though is blurred out 
almost as if there was some sort of chemical problem with the development of the film. Were it not for the fact that the rest of the photo appears to be just fine. At this point, I would know, like everyone to make a sanity roll, but I will need Margolotta, Rupert, and Amelia to do so with a penalty die. I failed anyway, badly. Which means, so you would take, you would roll two for your tens place, and you would take the worser one, which is the higher. Yeah. What do we try? What's this called? Do we have to beat? Yeah. What? Your uh, score. This is just your it, sanity it has... score. It's uh, going to be lower than okay. what your sanity is, which okay. I, it's a fail for me. Okay. And and you said penalty die for. Yeah. So you would roll two d10s for your tens place, and take the higher one, and then roll for your ones. I'm getting okay. insane. Yes, I failed. I failed. I succeeded. All right. Anybody succeeded. who failed loses 1d6 of sanity points. Uh, okay, Margot and one. Rupert make that two. Oh. 2d6 of sanity. Ooh. All right, so I just lost one sanity, so. Five in total. Okay. Eight in total. Okay. For it. Eight in total. Now, if I remember correctly, is that enough to hit your thing where you get a temporary uh, bout of madness? I think it is. So it's five or more. Of... It is. Yes. 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 Oh no! I should have oh, got yeah. one too. <laughs> oh dear! All right. I'm gonna break out the tables. Okay, so who lost five or more points? Please just call it out. Me. I did. I I, I okay. lost it. Or I lost five points earlier. I should have gotten okay. one earlier. Don't worry about that. There's still time. Uh, if you lost five points or more of sanity, you need to make an intelligence roll. Success. That is an ex extreme success. Okay. Rupert failed. All right. <laughs> so for those of you who have succeeded, temporary insanity ensues. Time for a bout of madness here. You were succeeded. aware enough to know that, yes. As you comprehend, uh, failure is good in this case down. because if you get, yes, if if you succeed on the intelligence test, that means you have some level of awareness, cognitive horrification of what's going on. So, Interesting. Okay. Margolotta. Yes. At this point, something bothering you a little bit in the of your mind. And as you turn and look toward Rupert, you see the face of Vind looking back at you. Are you the face could of have sworn what, sorry. your husband. Oh. That same husband whose ashes you wear around your neck, sitting next to you, real as life. Who else succeeded in the Elizabeth did. Elizabeth, okay.
Elizabeth, you're looking at that photo with the blurred face figure in the background, and suddenly you feel this piercing in your ears, really loud, almost like the after effects of an explosion or something like that. It's this, just this grating mechanical whine almost, and it hurts. Ah, 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 ah. And just like that, it dissipates. Mark, I'll yes. you blink. I'm very sorry, Rupert. I very much you reminded me of my dead husband. <laughs> You're much more handsome than he ever was, but that was strange. Uh, uh, yes, uh, that's okay. Something, something queer came over me too. It's uh, but I don't know I'm what's going on. I just feel a bit. Yeah. And uh, Elizabeth, are you are you okay? Yeah, I, I just have a little bit of, of, of ringing in my ear. I, I don't know what it was. I don't know. You see her kind of tugging at her ear, kind of going, ah. I think that's what they call it, uh, tendinitis. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I've, I've, I've never had that before. Sure, it's all just the excitement from what we just had. Must be it. Yeah, I, 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 I agree, one hundred percent. Tending that is well, something I... to be worried about. I would very much like to be part of this party, <laughs> making contact absolutely, with real yeah. Atlanteans. Is that that, that sounds absolutely Ooh, exciting? I thought that would pique your interest. Yeah, is... Joining of cultures. <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. Sign up, I, I say. Ask, <laughs> I can ask first and foremost, right at the source, what the anatomy is like. Would that be rude? That's probably rude. I shouldn't. I'm just I see that is just the sort of enthusiasm I'm looking for. Just the sort of enthusiasm I'm looking for. You know, I will, of, I of course, no... allow anybody to. I have absolutely ahead, no credentials, by the way. I'm just saying, <laughs> you, you, know, you know, that this is, uh, I'm very open-minded, don't you worry, in every regard. And I'm very happy to be the, uh, the representative of uh, the regular people. But scientifically speaking, my God, please don't rely on me. <laughs> uh, I <Thank> have you. <laughs> money. <laughs> I think you probably have a unique, like, cultural, like, view that the more scientific people might not notice. You, you, That's you a good... pay attention to other details. Oh yes, the smallest details even, because size does really not matter. <laughs> now you see, that is just the sort of enthusiasm and excitement that I had hoped for in my party. <laughs> when we open the bar back up, I'll give you a moment. I know it must be very exciting to hear that Atlantis is real and you're going to see it with your own two eyes. Simply can't. I was very overwhelmed myself once. <laughs> the first time I met the fish people. Uh, they don't really like to be called that, of course, but uh, I didn't know that at the time. The Atlanteans. Yes. Marvelous. What are they like when... if you've met them before? Oh. My dear, I couldn't even begin to describe it in a way that would make sense to the human mind. Just a little flash in his eye there. I mean... However... Oh. I will be leaving this fishbowl here. Produces a large glass bowl. Mrs. Frith brings it up along with some scraps of paper and pencils. Anyone who wishes to may anonymously cast their lot in with this expedition. You will have one hour. The 
bar will be open. You may eat, drink, converse, discuss, debate, make your wills, chuckles from the audience. And then at the end of that hour, we will embark upon our journey to places and people known. Enjoy. Carlotta is immediately throwing her name into the fishbowl and chuckles at the fact that it's a fishbowl. I like people with a sense of humour. Yes, I do. Rupert also More whiskey. chucks his name into the bowl. Elizabeth kind of quickly scrawls her name down and puts it in the bowl and just says, I, I'm, I'm kind of interested, but I'm hoping that I don't get picked. I, 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 I don't know about this. Reggie will debate uh, rigging the bowl and putting his name 20 times and then just put it in once. <laughs> Amelia was totally going to attempt to put her name in twice. <laughs> Rupert would like to, uh, if, he, if he may, talk to the doctor. Um, uh, so, uh, um, doctor, um, I did, I, I blurted out very, very vulgar of me. Uh, that I had money, would uh, would such a resource perhaps sway my chances for being on this expedition? Well, it has been ages since I've drafted a grant application myself. However, that is one of the benefits of working in the private sector of science is that you may be uh, financed by whomever you choose. Well. It does make it a little bit easier to uh, justify so-called cockamamie expeditions, if you know what I'm saying. But uh, tell you what, we'll talk about this. I would like to see if you're still interested when we return. Of course, I'm sure that you wish for some sort of preliminary justification before you sink all of your hard-earned money into this Oh, well, no, it's, my, it's father's. It'd be father's money. Oh, well done. I... In that case, who cares? <laughs> exactly. But let's not go crazy. I mean, let's not, not go overboard just yet. I mean, just to secure my place uh, on the expedition. Uh, what, what would we? What would you like? Hmm. I'll I'll try to be as charming as possible. Tell me a little bit about. Your family, Rupert. What do they like? What sort of yeah. things make them tick? Well, fathers from an old nautical family. A uh, founder of Trottington Trading Company uh, owns a lot of boats and uh, does a lot of business transatlantic. Fabulously wealthy, frightfully dull. Um, I myself have got time to, you know, seek out new things. So uh, here we are. Mother herself is, well, when she's sober, she's lovely. Um, but yes, that's kind of sums it up, really. Excellent. A shipping fleet, you say? Well. Yes. I'm sure that there's some sort of exclusive deal we could work out. If indeed my plans to bring the Atlantean technology to the people of Earth, I'll go according to my design. Excellent. We'll have the papers drawn up. You're staying at the hotel, yes? Yes, honeymoon suite. Trottington. Ah. Would expect nothing less. We'll have them drawn up and uh, sent to your room. An absolute pleasure, Doctor. Perhaps some extra insanity, considering we just got five gifted subs from Cali67. Thank you very much. Ooh. Thank you, Cali! Thank you. Oh, boy. The oh, madness boy. continues. 
We will get to that very soon. A plot twist. All right. Anything else anyone would like to do before we have the drawing of names? Um, I'm just going to go up to... Uh, what was her name again? Mrs. Uh, the... The hotel owner? Books. No, not the book. Oh, the book uh, lady. The books. Is she Jean, Miss Lila area? Dean. Mm -hmm. yep, I'm going to go up to Miss Lila Dean and talk to her about... And talk to her about all this. What do you think of the photos that he showed? If they're counterfeit, they're extraordinarily convincing. I don't know, you always see people coming up with all kinds of harebrained schemes to convince people that they found the real Atlantis. I've seen all of the tricks. Hell, I've even doctored a few of them myself for the right price, but... Well, if these are fakes, you fooled me. Seems legitimate. I'm thinking of putting my name in that bowl. You? Uh, hi, hi, I don't know. Uh, it's just one of those, uh, uh, things that I am kind of curious about. I mean, I, I did put my name in the bowl, but I honestly am hoping not to depict. It's one of those things that I'm, I, I, I get a little bit nervous about, you know. Yeah, tickling I mean, sleeping dragons and all that. Yeah. I mean, I, you you know, uh, well, I've told you about my father a couple of times in my letters. About how he, I lost him in the war and that I, I'd rather try to save up money to go to France and see him to visit where he died and that, so. Yes. I, I don't know anymore. Well, but. of course you may feel is right, but I'll admit my curiosity has been piqued, and this seems like the chance of a lifetime. What a fine legacy to live up to. Yes, I, I, that is one of the things that this is about, isn't it? A legacy. Mm -hmm. History. First person who first people to step in Atlantis after who knows how long. Yes. The chance not just to see it, but to make it yourself. I'm in. My and goodness. then I'm and just I gonna hear. grab a drink and say I'll, I'll see you later. We have a couple of things before we take a very quick break and the names are drawn. Thank you so much for those five gift subs. I'm actually going to uh, roll a d10 here to see which of our party members is going to lose a little bit of their remaining sanity here. Hashtag not Elizabeth. <laughs> Amelia. Hashtag blame Lydia. Here. It is you. <laughs> it is you who must lose a d6 with of sanity. What about this oh, no. is particularly unnerving to you? What, is, what about this to your journalistic mind gives you pause? I, like, the fact, like, in her head, like, Atlantis was a like place didn't realize that there might actually be people there that they could actually like interact with and they're both very excited and very very kind of like oh geez and 
really, 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 really wants to make sure that they get picked for this expedition. And I rolled a six, by the way. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Juicy. All right. Time for a little bout of madness. Ooh. Interesting. I get to roll on another table for this. Uh oh. They can't bode well. It's always that's always good news, right? <laughs> it's the roll on no, the it's never good treasure news. table, right? <laughs> hey, right? at least you're not grievously wounded, okay? <laughs> huh, interesting. Yeah. I could have fixed that. <laughs> A little bit unusual for you, given the fact that you work in such a literary profession. You're looking at words on the program for the night's events, the signs instructing people which is the way to the elevator, which the way to the restrooms. And the letters kind of swim a little bit before your eyes forming and reforming, coalescing into things that look spiky and strange. Very unsettling. It makes you feel a little bit sick to your stomach, almost like you got hit on the head and are just now seeing stars where once you saw bits of ink and paper that made sense, that helped you make order out of chaos. For a second surge, Lydia. Yay! I mean, it's you. Oh, no. <laughs> random yeah, random one decisions. D random decisions. 1d6. 1d6? Yes. 5. Okay, Bouts of Madness, here we come. You look back at Rupert across the room. Thinking it was a little strange previously that you had seen the face of your husband attached to him. And he turns around and is back at it again. Looks just like your husband. And as he throws back his head to laugh at some witty joke that he's just cracked being very sparkly, you see his massive gills, livid and red, open up on his neck. Almost like a fish out of water. His teeth grow long, the fangs dripping with some sort of deep sea slime and ooze. That is beautiful. And he closes his mouth. And you see Rupert again. I have to write that down. And then I said, you shouldn't have Merlot with fish. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, and on that wonderful oh. note, we are going to take a very quick break so that your GM can use the facilities. We will be right back. Stick around.
And we are back. A pleasant cocktail hour has passed in the meantime with some repartee, a little bit of insanity, and all of our investigators putting their names into the fishbowl. It will surprise none of you that there by fate, or by the powers of persuasion, all of your names were drawn to join Dr. Edward Garth on his descent to contact the Atlanteans. Now we must wait until the tide is going out, for only then will the entrance to their hallowed halls be visible. You may gather anything that you need and we will meet at the base of the lighthouse at low tide. So well then, my dears, and he goes off upstairs to collect his belong things that he needs. If there is anything else you all would like to do, now is the time. Otherwise, we can go ahead and transition to the city. Um, Rufa would just like to do a quick clothing change into something more suitable for exploring un underwater mysterious places. Sounds good. And Which are Amelia, after like seeing all the like words and stuff like move around, she probably was like scribbling things that she saw and is probably just staring in her notebook trying to like rearrange letters and words to see if anything makes sense which it isn't probably but she's just like wait there was word and what is this and <laughs> what could it mean and oh man fish people indeed so you all make your way to the base of this lighthouse which is a little bit further removed from the rest of the city, you know, being on the point of land that juts out the most in order to warn the ships. Still a working lighthouse all these years later, although the port of St. Augustine is not what it used to be. And there you see the professor dressed same as ever, holding on a little hook, one of those glowing oars that you had noticed in the pictures from the Atlantis slideshow. Right, we are all here then. And Miss Dean joining you as well, I see. And she is there with a notebook. A little bit of a skeptical look on her face, but she's joining you. Now, I'm going to have to lay down a couple of ground rules before we get, get into this. First of all, no photography without permission, obviously. This is a sensitive anthropological expedition, an experiment. We do not wish to be disrespectful. Second of all, no touching things without permission. <coughs> Generally a very good rule in life, yes, yes. I know, but uh, you know, we are uh, scientists, after all. We like to poke I, I things and see if they move, make funny noises. Yes, indeed. Indeed we do. And the last thing before we go. You are all here because you are open-minded and because I presume you will keep your mouths shut about anything you may see or hear beneath the sea here. That weirdly rhymed. We are I going to keep this between question. ourselves. We are going to keep this between ourselves until such a time as my paper on the discovery can be published in the Journal of New Atlantean Studies. I am not about to be scooped out of this discovery by any enterprising young whippersnappers or old ones. A sideways, the may be. sideways but, glance at Amelia. Uh, Amelia, like, not so, like, tries to subtly, like, put her pen and notebook, like, in her pocket. Like, oh, you may take notes. Just keep them to yourselves. And I promise when the time comes to break the news, we'll make sure you were the first to do it. 
Reggie, you were about to say to something? I do have a question. Hey, I'll pull out the trident. I was told this was an Atlantean trident. We happen to know if it's real. He looks at it. And just smiles. You were about to find out. He goes to the base of the lighthouse and holding the little lamp thing aloft begins to chant in some arcane language that none of you has ever heard before and is like tracing circles and shapes and flicking his fingers in the air and you see the sand begin to twist and swirl almost like a weird whirlpool that's just going down, down, down to the depths of the sea. With a final whoosh, seawater comes blasting up from this hole that is now created by the billowing column of sand and waves. To Atlantis, he says, steps through the water. Uh, what just happened? Well, I've never seen that in all my 60, 59 years of... <laughs> my god. <laughs> oh, magic. Was that real magic? Actual magic we just saw. Oh. Probably. Oh god. She takes out a nicely decorated flask from some pocket somewhere in her little coat and just... Alright, I'm ready. Oh. oh, help me go, I guess. I'll step through. <laughs> you only live once. Like, Link. I link Ethel's arm and hold out my, my other arm for anyone else. And then, uh... Elizabeth is gonna kind of tightly grab a hold of your arm. <laughs> and go through. Here goes nothing. And... Yeah, follows in. And he is there, holding his lantern on the opposite side. Do you find yourself now standing in those same tunnels that you saw on that slide projector? And they are far bigger than the photographs made them out to be. Massive, like some giant boring machine just came through and carved out an entire area under the under the earth under the sea darling it's better down where it's wetter and begins to descend down towards the center of the earth as dr garth walks along holding the lantern aloft with miss dean following far behind him. She is charting out some sort of sketchy map. Uh, it appears that she's tried to recreate some of the hand symbols that he used in order to open the portal. He's like, come along now. It won't be too long before we see them. I would like everybody to make a spot hidden roll. Uh, that is a fail. That's an extreme success. Extreme I'm very fail. attentive right now. Fail. Extreme. Super fail. <laughs> okay. Oh, Colin, you're mute. You're muted. Am I better? You were. I don't know if you succeeded or okay. failed. I, I, I failed. Okay, I was like, you were smiling, but I don't know if it was a success weird, smile or a failure that. smile. So the rest of you are just following along behind Dr. Garth. Margaletta, out of the corner of your eye, is that an insect? Or a lobster? Something. The shiny carapace. You hear the of little chitinous legs. 
scrabbling along the floor. And just as quickly as all that, disappears into the shadow again. Did anyone else see the lobster creature? Is this normal, Doctor? Professor? Lobster creature. Yeah, I don't lobster see any creature? lobster. No, can't say I Is did. this another thing for your book? I'm not sure my readers are quite ready for that sort of adventure. I think fish people will be... Uh, will be hard enough to convince my publisher to, to well, run with. If you really want to but... take it, perhaps a fish person and lobster crossover of sorts. Ooh. I'll put it down. I'm sure to credit you if that ever comes to pass. But is that sort of... Or... Have you seen this sort of thing before here? What about crab people? Oh yes, it's rather common, actually. The Atlanteans have been able to harness all sorts of creatures that live beneath the sea, things that are as yet unknown to modern science for their great marvels of engineering and architecture. And you hear his voice just kind of fading as he's continuing to walk through the hallway. Margaretta, everyone else just hears the of footsteps falling on slightly damp uh, rock. But you hear, in addition, the click, 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 click of something distinctly more insect-like, along with the rest of the group. Huh. Well, if they're quite harmless, then I'm sure it's all right. And I follow. Continuing down, it's getting much colder. The caverns are big, and there's no real draft of air coming up the way that there would be from a tunnel beneath the earth. You are underwater after all. Everything is beginning to feel much more close, humid and damp. You've gone from the sound of footsteps plopping on wet stone to a sort of squelch, an unpleasant sucking sound as you lift your feet up from the floor and look down. And it's some kind of strange bright blue mucus coating the floors, dripping down on your heads from the ceiling, the walls, Need everybody to make a sanity roll, please. Chameleon flashbacks. Here we go again. Yeah. I'd like to scoop a Actually, bit off my boot. Like, that is, up a little bit. That is a 35 out of 69, so that's a success. 64 out of 69. I rolled a 69. Nice. Nice. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a success, too. <laughs> I passed as well, and I'm sad about it. <laughs> I failed. You failed, right. I have failed every <sighs> roll today. <laughs> that was my score, too. <laughs> so we had a failure from Rupert and also Reggie? Yep. Okay. Please lose a d6 of sanity and tell me how much we need to roll madness. Oh gosh, I lost four. Okay. Three. Three. This has put you extremely on edge. But the curiosity to see what comes next keeps you going. Down, down, down. Don't mind the muck, dears. You hear the professor's voice. Strangely, although you could have sworn you'd been walking together just a moment ago. All you can see now is that light bobbing in the distance, his voice echoing through the caverns. We are about to take you to the Sanctum Sanctorum, if you will, the place where the true greatness of this city of Atlantis lies. Won't be long now, come along, my dears. 
could you could you wait for us, please, for, for Doctor? Uh, you're, I, we're just getting ahead of us a little bit, please. Could you just just a little second? You hear a little off-key whistling as the light continues to bob down the hall. He pays you no Reggie's attention. Gonna... Reggie's gonna see if he can subtly and quickly just like scoop up some of the mucus into like a little vial. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, uh, you can um... do that. You can do that. I don't want to alarm you, but he seems to be, like, can't catch up. Let's, do... can we pick up the pace a bit, please? Yes, I'm yeah, yeah. very, very to just... see what's happening. But he has in store for us, it's going to be so much fun. We got to I'm going to ask Miss Dean... <laughs> I'm going to ask Miss Dean uh, what she thinks of this. She just looks at you, thousand yard stare, and is just like, goes back to the book. Oh, and I'm man. just going to try to, I'm going to keep following the professor. I would like to run to catch the presser. Alright. You run ahead from the rest of the group for it. And you quickly find yourself in a clearing of sorts with many different branching tunnels off of it. There are flashing lights attached to large mechanical devices, making whirring sounds. They appear to be drilling holes through the wall. And creatures walking around, wearing some of those same Atlantean armor scraps that you had seen that Reggie had been traveling with. And large cylindrical drums arrayed in a circle around a well in the center of the room. It's a very dark, watery well. You can't see what goes to the bottom of it. As you look to get a closer look, crane your neck over the edge, you feel a sharp pain hit you in the back of the head. And everything goes black. What? What in the place? The rest of you wandering into the room, seeing Rupert lying down, just stunned. You assume he'll recover his senses pretty quickly. And as you all file into the room, the armored creatures turn to look at you, and you hear a... <laughs> sort of noise emanating from where their faces would... Behind you, a screech of metal rasping against rock as Miss Dean pulls a sliding door shut behind you. Boom. Closing you uh. in. Rupert, that is the first thing that you see when you open your eyes, just like lying on the ground, watching this door slide shut and hearing that clang. What the blaze just happened? Get up. Uh, Who did that? Who? I think we've been trapped. Coward. I think we've been trapped. Show yourself. It happened other to be a surprise party or, not, or uh, something. Are we in there with other people or are we alone? You are in there with uh, some of the armored fish people, Atlanteans. Oh, this is, seems to be a private party then. 
Yeah. Hello! Is the professor still there? You don't see him, but echoing across the halls, you can hear his voice. Now the time has come. Yes, my dear. You, you, you realize that this is all a little bit frightening, isn't it? it, it a little well, bit the truth rude. Of this, the truth of this world is one of the most frightening things that the human mind can ever encounter. Which is perhaps why we like them so very much. Little brains. All of their little thoughts, such delicious electrical impulses, driving themselves towards destruction. Now you hold on one second. I don't know who you think you're dealing with here, but I'm not to be trifled with. I know important people. Why? Um... Oh, come now, Rupert. You said it yourself. We're only dealing with some of the most open-minded individuals that have ever been curious about this lost city. We do so love our minds. Could we have a tour, please? Yes, of course. We. Yes. The. Atlanteans have linked arms and formed a sort of circle around you. And you hear this. Like insect droning noise, just ratcheting up to this feverishly obnoxious crescendo. Very similar to that ringing in your ears, Elizabeth, that you had when you looked at that picture. The professor materializes then in the center of the room, except where once only one of you could really notice this, now all of you see his face is blurred distorted as if it's a picture with difficult chemical problems developing the film. Mm. This is you all the picture. Would you... you were the one in the picture. Very clever. Well, that's the thing about our bodies. We don't photograph very well. The rest of you, on the other hand, oh, wear you very nicely. I wonder which one of you would look the most attractive on the arm of the Atlanteans. Who could we take to show off while your brains sit here, toiling away for us, feeding us those delicious Life memories? Oh, crap. <laughs> Wait, memories uh, like what can I get the answer on that trident? <laughs> oh yes, it's genuine. Yes. <laughs> In every artifact of Atlantis, there is a kernel of truth designed to get at the curious parts of the open minded, the desperate, the lost. The people with pens full of ink, but no one willing to publish their words. Those lost in time, destined to have their hands of their clocks turn ever backwards, and they should march on. Could we go back to the brain eating bit? Because that is. Oh, well, if you're volunteering. No, that was not my intention. Why? How? Oh, good. And can I take notes, please? <laughs> Look, I've just about had enough it of wants these cheap to theatrics. Know why? 
And Elizabeth is just going to kind of slowly back up, like, you know, it's very subtle. You back up to the point where you bump into the Atlanteans droning incessantly still all the while. Like a horde of in except their armor has melted away a bit beneath it revealing almost insect lobster like creations with big leathery wings. Beans. And you try and get away just get away anything from the noise, but the same mucus that had hindered your passage down through these tunnels rooted your feet to the floor. I need everyone to make a sanity check now, please. Yeah, not happy. Ah, maybe roll that. Okay. Success. I am actually going to spend five luck to make that a success. Okay. I'm still good. I okay. had a success. Um, As a success yeah. for me. Do you get Everyone like succeeded. super successes? Like, or is it just hard fails? Or is it hard uh, you can, but that stuff? doesn't really apply here. I would let you know yeah. if All it right. gave you a thing. Cool, cool, cool. Well, I understand a little bit of your reticence, but I think that once you see the way that the process works, you'll come to understand that we can give you the kind of life that you can only imagine. Lyra, my dear, thank you so kindly for bringing these people to me. Would you like to receive your reward? And she sort of walks forward towards the well. And takes a drink out of it. You see her eyes roll back in her head as her body just collapses and <laughs> bounce. Head hits the, the floor. Oh, she's going to have a Some concussion Atlanteans now. Break the circle and pick her up by each of her four limbs. Carrying her to one of the cylinders. You watch as out of their mouths, if you can call them that, with this <laughs> rasping sound comes proboscis that goes through the ears, the mouth, in through the eyes, drinking something out of where her brain would be. They take it to one of these cylindrical drums. Deposit there. And then you hear her voice. Well. This is interesting. My body's gone. I think... I think I'd like to see the stars. She falls silent. And one of the Atlanteans begins to pull her skin over its carapace, putting the face over like a hood. You hear this <laughs> as the insect parts kind of like pop the human body into place. And just, well, I'll finally show up on camera. Excellent. Who's next? I'm assuming this process is not reversible. No. Probably not a, a um, trial period or anything. 
Margalotta will try and go back, uh, run back to that door that came shut and try and open it. Yep. Rupert is also doing that. Ah! And <laughs> gonna. You'll just like, okay, you can go with them. Not worth the research. Not worth the research. Ah, you can go door. ahead open. and make a strength test if you like. It will be very sure. difficult. It will be a hard um, test. Yeah. So you would have yeah. to hit your threshold for your, yeah, next degree. I actually did. It's not, you did? It's not an extreme, but it is a hard, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, seven, dang. 16. I was going to yeah, say, I was, wow. I was just, like, literally trying to pull on her leg, so... Hot old lady defeats fish people. <laughs> so much worse, much yet to write. I cannot die here. <laughs> you are able to <clears throat> wrench the door open just wide enough for one person to squeeze through if they really try hard. The professor's voice begins echoing off of the walls as he just laughs with the chittering of the various creatures now, if you can call it that. All right, then. It wants to know why, and it wants to have a little bit of fun. We can respect that. 30 second head start. If you can make it back to the lighthouse, you can keep it. Your brain, your body. You're worthless to us when you're not willing. But if you're too slow, I suppose we could always just use you as servants. Tick tock. I'm not anybody's right, help. So going, Let's go going now. It's so oh, we're we gonna do. Yeah. Oh really? Okay. Listen to Amelia. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Amelia is curious and she's like, okay, but like, what happened to her? Like she talked. She didn't die, or. I think you can't want them. Ah. Yes, like, of course. Let me put it to you this way. The uh, followers that we have on the Earth always like to talk about change, how it's coming soon. Well, the greatest change, of course, would be the transmutation of the body into something greater. Now, we are interstellar travelers. After all, we feast upon the darkness of space and the energy of memories. Hmm. But we can't eat your food. We're trapped here. And we are so hungry. So, we send our minions out to the Earth. You feed us. And we give you eternity. What you just saw your dear friend Miss Dean go through is the transmutation of the Mego. Her brain will now reside in this cylinder. And she is free to travel through astral projection wherever she wishes in exchange for us feeding on her memories and using her body to further our own interests. Now that is if you cooperate. If you don't, as I said, we always need servants. So which will it be, Amelia? Hmm. It is an intriguing proposition. Amelia, darling, they sucked her brains out of her ears, eyes, and nostrils. But we gave but, um, her so much more. 
Tizo. That's your word. An, That's an the word of a charlatan. Far greater than the pen could ever give. Hmm. That is rather tempting. This door's getting heavy, Amelia. Choose now. Oh. Margalot is already out. Like. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At this point, like, she hasn't also moved to the fight, so she will Reggie need a hit set. Yeah. I was gonna say Elizabeth is. She's also done what? Did you follow? Think? Oh, movement of five. Yeah. Amelia, I will wait forever. You must choose. Could you, you know, could I make a request? You're using my body for, you know, your whatever your plan is. Could you, you know, just make me famous? Like, I want people to remember my name, see it in big print, you know. <laughs> we will make you unforgettable. I run. I All right, just Amelia's going to become a fish yeah. person. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Elizabeth, Elizabeth, yeah. open out. Uh-huh. Yeah, right yeah, no. <laughs> they nod, and four of the Atlanteans come to pick you up at each of your four limbs to enact the transmutation of the Migo. As the rest of you begin to run, I'm gonna need movement from everybody because you're not way that easily and they're still going to chase after you. <laughs> oh, the last thing that sees is Amelia being taken away. Oh, I hate it. Uh, I have a movement rate of eight, so. Okay. I'm hobbling with a five. I also have an eight. So, Elizabeth has an 8, and Reggie has an 8. Uh, Rupert has an 8. Rupert also has an 8. eight. But he is going to stay with Margaleta and help. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Alright. So, we have established the chase. We are now going to uh, see how, how, how good everybody's speed is, relatively speaking, to see if any of you are able to just break away initially. Um, so everybody make a con roll for me to test your endurance here. Um, if you succeed, there will be no change to your movement rating. If you get an extreme success, you get plus one movement. And a failure will be minus one. And I <laughs> I'm paying one luck. Ego. I'll pay one luck to make an, a success for the con save. Ooh. Ooh. I'll pay 13 to get an success. Uh, I don't think if I, right. even if I paid all 10 of my luck, it would do nothing. <laughs> I rolled a 98. Ooh, that Can is a use... fumble indeed. Oh, oh, boy. Yeah. Can you use what? I was going to say, can you use luck to give you like a hard success? Or to give uh, you that extra maybe? speed? Yeah, I, think, I believe you can use like luck pushing to your push luck a roll, thing, right? Pushing a roll. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Push a roll. Yeah. If I fail again. I, know, I made it. Bad. If you fail again, yeah. I... yeah. I got a success, so I'm just gonna. Cool. S I'll stick with um, Margarita. Okay. And I guess the Did you I'm end up uh, failing? Who ended up with a failure at the end? Okay. I'm probably, probably gonna push. Reggie. Okay. So pushing, how does that work? Uh, pretty much.
much. I think it's a re-roll, and then if you... Re-roll if I if fail, you, it's really bad. Yes. It's really bad. Anna gets to decide your fate. <laughs> so fuck you. Uh, uh. <laughs> I rolled 99! <laughs> <laughs> I rolled 98 full of 99. Wow. All right. You guys have betrayed me. So, Amelia is busy undergoing the transmutation of the Amigo. You hear this just unearthly scream from one of them as it drops down from the ceiling, totally pinning Reg the ground, and just sticks the proboscis straight through his throat. They're not even bothering with the brain on this one. They just want the body for the rest of forever. And, uh, yeah. The rest of y'all are running, and you've got a pack of these Migo behind you. So the way that this chase works, um, we do this in some rounds, and we'll act in order of how fast everybody You get a certain number of actions per your turn. You can move forward, spending your action. You can initiate attack, cast a spell, or perform some other action, like if you, you know, encounter a locked door that you need to open, or have to uh, open a portal back to the real world, all that sort of thing. Um, and you cannot push rolls in a chase. You would have the opportunity to roll again when your next round is. So we begin with Elizabeth. Elizabeth is just going to keep running. She's scared out of her mind right now. So Great. she's so going to keep running. Your... Awesome. Spending your move to do so. The Migo is going to go next. Let's see. Sorry, just writing this down real quick. All right, and then we have Margoletta and Rupert. What would you like to do? Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. This was a mistake. I need my hands to write. How good is a brain in the stars when all my thoughts can't be written paper? <laughs> and she'll be hobbling away. Come on. So you're spending the out movement actions. Okay. Fast as you can. I'm right here. Thank you. Thank you for not deserting me. Uh, yeah, moving. Just moving. Okay. So far, you are barely ahead of this Miko. It is close Elis- enough. Elizabeth, that... are you still with us? Reggie! Reggie! Oh, Elis- Elizabeth is, Elizabeth's gonna stay, stay, it's gonna try to stay close, but she's not, she's gonna, she's just, she's gonna say, come on! Uh, Elizabeth, it's now your turn. You want to keep advancing? Um, I'm actually going to turn around real quick, pull out a revolver that I brought with me, and just fire. Okay. Okay. Try to... So, let's see if we can get something going. Oh, heck no, that's a 72 out of 40. Mm. The gun just clicks. No bullet in that chamber, unfortunately. Oh, All right. Damn it! Well, it is now the Migo's turn. It is going to... Sensing Margolotta and Rupert's nearness... Hang on, one second. (laughs) It is going to try and cast 
its death spell. All right, so we are going to roll opposed power. So Margoletta and Rupert, I will need you to roll power for me. Ooh. I'll spend my last three luck for that. So I make it. Okay. How does how does luck work? I've got a luck total of sixty. Can you can I spend as much as you want to make it a success or a amount of more. Yeah, as much as you. Alright, I'll where's use the, two to Where's make the it luck thing again on the sheet? Because then I thought it was something else. Um, it's right under your current hit points. Mm, didn't calculate that. It's fine. Keep going. Doesn't matter. Uh, so you... What were your power rolls? It has to succeed against you. Did you both succeed? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, it rolled a 90, so I'm assuming that uh, <laughs> we're good on that one. So you feel as it's sort of chasing after you, the cavern just starting to get really hot and humid. You gather it is gearing up to do something, but you're not what. So now we hear back to Margoletta and Rupert. What would you like to do with your turn? Move, fight, cast, spell, do something else. What are your options? I certainly didn't bring any guns. I'm an old woman who was expecting a buffet and not a death day, so I do not have any weapons on me. Um, so I'm running. All right. I will... You can only do one thing, can't you? You can't... You have to choose which one you're yep. doing. Okay. Right. I'll... Yeah, so... Run. Run. I'll. I'll cover you. Get as far away as you can, and I'll I'll draw my faithful uh, duck shooting shotgun, and I'll turn around. I'll turn around and I'll take a shot at whoever whoever's closest. Die, filthy right. loves the person. The firearms roll. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh, I'm gonna spend some more luck on that if that's okay. Yeah, that's what it's there for. Okay. 38, that makes it a success. Alright. Go ahead and roll damage for me. Oh, gosh. I have no idea what a shotgun does. I believe it's a, a what D six plus your any bonus attack bonus you have. It's not much. Five. Five. Okay. Five. Five. Excellent. Now we are back to Elizabeth. You're muted. Sorry, I had to mute my my mic because of uh, something going down All the road. Good. Um, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna grab uh, Margot and say, "Come on, we gotta get out of here." Okay. I'm running as fast and as I can, running. young the lads. So you're using your action for movement? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna try the to help me her out. Okay. The uh, Migo will go next in the same place with Rupert, and it is going to try and cast its death spell again. So let's do an opposed power roll, if you would be so good. Okay. 30. That's a success. Well, 
Amigo succeeded, but it did not beat you. So you feel this blast of heat getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but you gather that shooting it with a shotgun may have interrupted some of what it was attempting to do. Um, oh. Now we are up to Rupert and Margaletta. You need what you like. Keep running. Keep running with Elizabeth, okay. muttering. Oh god, oh god, so many books to write. I will name a, I will name a hero after dear Rupert. Oh god, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk okay, about books later. Elizabeth? Um, Back to you. I'm gonna uh, keep helping Margot get to the exit as quickly as possible. Okay. Still running. Awesome. Uh, uh, also, we might get more insanity oh, no. losses oh, no. because <laughs> Rafa just on? gifted five. <laughs> What's going on in the chat? What is all that? that Thank you, Draco. Insan insanity dwindling away. Amazing. Amazing. Ah, all right. I just saw that. I was like, oh, God, no. Ah. <laughs> uh... They haven't okay, got my. They haven't again. got their filthy hooks into me yet, Margareta. Margareta. And I won't shoot this rough time. I'll run and catch up. My faith in you. With, okay. With the ladies. All right. So you are gonna run and catch up. So with Rupert hot on the heels, just mind, and this squelching, disgusting fluid all around slowing you down you also see out of the corner of your eyes the walls beginning to just crawl with these creatures some of them in larval stage looking a little bit like termites coming out of nests if you look very closely at them some of them tend to have almost human-like faces including the one that looked like Lyra, chasing after you. Amelia. Reggie, the giant hole in his throat. And I need all of you to lose 1d6 of sanity. I don't know about Rupert, but okay, Evan's losing two. sanity right now. Uh, that's a five. <laughs> oh, that's oh, oh, oh. for me. Okay. Evan, got it. Can't take that luck with you. For, how much is fifty? Oh no, that is no fifty-one. I could spend nine. I could spend, yeah, I'm gonna spend the luck to succeed. Okay. So we had one failure for Marta. Oh, we're rolling sanity. Sorry. Yes. I, okay, I'm sorry. I I misunderstood. I thought we were rolling a d6. Yeah, you are rolling. A, you're you're losing a d6 of sanity. Sorry, you're not oh, rolling oh, okay. for sanity. So Margo Oh, okay. Funnily enough, as the dice would have it, having this weird uh, amount of creatures following you and having seen something similar, what Rupert's face looked like, gives you a, a an unexpected burst of speed. And you were actually able to get to the place where the professor opened the portal because that's how we rolled on the table. <laughs> so your insanity is also your good fortune. Yeah. So you were at the point of the portal, uh, which has not been closed at this time. Still shooting column of sand and seawater. One last time though. The Miko begin to spread their wings and fly towards you. It's just this screaming, writhing horde. You can hear the calls of the, your former friends, former investigators saying things. Everybody, you're making opposed power rolls one last time as the heat washes over you. Oh my god. I got a extreme, extreme success. I oh, got wow. a three. 
Okay. I got 94. I got 69. And I needed a 70, so I'm good. Nice. <laughs> the dice know me. Nice. So, Elizabeth and Margoletta, able to just, with that last bit of adrenaline, push yourselves forward, leap through into the portal, which begins catapulting you up towards the surface. Meanwhile, Rupert, look down as you feel your skin begin to boil like it's turning into hot wax. You smell the stench of your hair as it's slowly starting to catch fire. And the last thing that you hear before it all engulfs you. I did tell you to keep an open mind. <laughs> and... We cut to Margoletta and Elizabeth standing at the <laughs> base of the lighthouse. <laughs> oh let's get out of here. Oh god. <laughs> Rupert! Oh, let's get out of here. Are you coming? Where's Rupert? <laughs> Margoletta, we, got, we gotta get, keep going. Come on. Okay. But Rupert. And She's being dragged away by Elizabeth at this point, looking back every now and then. I know, I, I feel... He helped, he helped save us. We gotta get out of here! Yes, yes, right now. Out of this horrible place. Out of Florida. Out of the States. Yes, yes, I'm going... The godforsaken continent. I, I'm going back, back up the path. Pennsylvania. I, I don't know, maybe, maybe go across the sea, I don't know. Or no, not sea, no seas. Just, just give me an idea for, for a book. I'm, a couple of cultists, maybe. I could turn the fish people into cultists. I could, I could tell the truth. Through fiction. Yes. Yes. Oh, God. I'd actually, I would actually love to read that. Uh, she takes out the flask takes another swig, gives it to Elizabeth. Here, gal, you need it. Elizabeth's gonna... Elizabeth's gonna... <laughs> is gonna drink it out of it, too. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 And they hobble back, run back every... every now and then, looking back to the lighthouse to try and get back to where normal people are. Every person they pass gets a suspicious look because it could be one of them. We would never know. Elizabeth's like kind of very weary and kind of holding on to Margot, and it's just like, uh, 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 I don't, uh, I don't trust any of these people. Oh, me neither. We need to stay together. We need to. We can only rely on each other. Now, oh god, it's only us against the Atlanteans. Oh, this could turn into a lesbian story, actually. <laughs> Again, I would love to read it later on. <laughs> it's all, it's all talk about it, oh my god. Yes, I think I might drink, dr drink that for the first time. And as you board the train to take you out of the ancient city, full of secrets, full of all sorts of stories for the open-minded to find, as the train pulls away from the station, you see someone dressed in very beautiful, stylish clothing, looking a lot like your old friend, Amelia, handing out some pamphlets to people on the train platform. And as you pull out of the station, you hear her voice far louder than you would expect from inside of the train. Change is coming. Change is coming. Soon. Change is coming. 
Change, change is, is coming. coming. Change is coming. Change is coming. Change is coming. And that is the Call of Cthulhu Atlantis. That was beautiful. <laughs> That was can great. Can we come out of purgatory now? Yes, Turn you may down. come out of purgatory. <laughs> oh, that's that, oh, 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 my God. God. Oh, so betrayed. Thank you so, so, so much. much. <laughs> the two book ah, the two survived. Nine. <laughs> Oh, that, that was incredible. absolutely incredible. I am so glad that I got to play with y'all and have you Same. as role players. Any day of the week is fine by me. <laughs> that was phenomenal. Thank you so much. So I think uh, as part of our uh, closeout, we'll go around, do any like brief little character arrows. You can tell us uh, who you are where we can find you on the internet and you can plug any projects that you're working on. We'll go in reverse order this time. So we'll go ahead and start with Chai. Hi. Yeah, a Amelia just wanted to get famous and it sounded like, a, like it was a very tempting offer. So, you know, sometimes you just have to embrace the chaos. Um, and you can find me on Twitter at girly Chai. Um, later tonight at 8 p.m. EDT, you can find me on Roll the Rolls Twitch channel playing some Pathfinder 2 Extinction Curse, where I play a cleric who shoots her bow more often than she heals. Because, you know, that's a thing. Um, Friday nights, you can find me playing Mama Zara who also likes to embrace the abyssal chaos um, here on Encounter Roleplay at 9 p.m. My brain just blinked on times. And coming up on September 9th, I will be playing Terror RPG here uh, for One Shot Wednesdays. And I am super excited. And this was fabulous, Anna. I look forward to the time we get to play together again. Y'all were great. Me too. Colin! Hello, I am uh, Colin C. Kelly. Uh, I do design things as well as various other streams. I'm a part of Wayward Expeditions, the Rise of the Rune Woods podcast. You can find that at wayward-expeditions.com. Uh, we just finished recording episode 47, I think. But yeah, 47 was yesterday. Uh, but in terms of what's published, I believe we're up to 25 now. Uh, I am. Uh, you can also find me later at some point on One Shot Wednesdays here, and also later today when I'm running the Spy Hander at uh, 6 EDT. That'll be fun. Change is also. Change will also out. be coming. Up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This this game had a few little Easter eggs, including Miss um, Ethel Frith who was the uh, baker and proprietor of the hotel, if you watch our Tentacle Tuesdays. Uh, Lyra Dean, the competent ancient book collector, of course, homage to Lydia. Uh, a few different little things. Change is coming soon. Stick around for Colin's Vihander game because uh, that's where I heard it first, that change is coming soon. Uh, Laura, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself, where we can find you, projects you're involved in. Uh well, hi guys. I'm I'm Laura, aka Dark Wolf of Taros. Um, I am actually usually on Discord under the same tag. Uh, so right now, I'm not in any games per se. I'm not really into the project, any projects or anything at the moment. Um, every once in a while, you might catch me on twitchtv slash Taros playing a random game every once in a blue moon. Other than that, this is like my third Call of Cthulhu game that I've been in. Um, I'm right now in a campaign uh, playing Down a Darker Trail as Katie McCoy at my local game store. Shout out to White Knights Game Room in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Uh, but other than that, I'm really not doing any projects right now other than having fun with you guys. This was awesome. I mean, I was smiling the whole way. 
And so were the Migo. <laughs> so were the Migo. Oh my god. I hated those people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Tell me more about that. Evan. I'm, yeah, I, I, w I will. Um, I'm, I'm Evan. I'm at Maori Nerd on Twitter and Twitch. Um, I run my own stream doing a bit of D and D, Tales from the Loop, hoping to start some alien RPG because I love everything 3D. Um, and also was on Dark Matter, um, the Conspiracy in the Stars, um, recently with the wonderful Di and a whole bunch of really cool people. Um, and firstly, I'd just like to say um, thank you for inviting me to EncounterCon and to this game. Um, I was really humbled to be invited and I had such a good time with all of you. It was really a really good experience. I've never played Call of Cthulhu before. Absolutely terrifying. Anna, oh my god, <laughs> that was horrifying. <laughs> uh, I think my favorite scene was um, when we were um, in like the chamber at the end and Lyra got like accepted her prize and then after that it was just like ah no out out <laughs> and then just from there just the just the the hideous horrifying ex trying to get out from there but uh rupert um was uh raised properly in a in a chivalrous way and couldn't help but you know help um his, his friends so yeah thank you so much i really i really enjoyed it and thank you, Tech, as well. And your sacrifice yeah, is definitely very, appreciated. Very much. <laughs> yes, it was very appreciated. <laughs> yeah, with without that, I don't think anyone would have made it. Like we were intrigued, then we were freaked out, but hesitant, and then we were just like, nope, and Scooby Doo the fuck out of there. Um, <laughs> and I did, really did like the kind of being picked off one by one with with Chai starting to just go like, hmm, maybe. Yeah, okay. Actual sea travel sounds fun. Didn't like, expect cool. anyone was going to choose that, but... <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that we were... Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> Let me I, was, on a... I, I, I was so like, I kind of really want to do it, but this might... I don't know, it could like screw everything up and maybe I shouldn't, but kind of really want to. I'm just going to do yeah. it. <laughs> I mean, this this he had a good sell. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the thing. When we do like storytelling heavy games, which uh, for everyone watching, you'll figure that out <laughs> if you stay tuned for the terror RPG as well, because that is a very storytelling heavy game. And uh, especially over the last year and last two years, Encounter has gone so hard on uh, storytelling and more open games, uh, a little bit away from the war games, a little bit more towards really letting everyone try things and the GMs just going yes and um, that is of course what we find interesting we hope that you find interesting as well and there will be more of that if you've been around yesterday you will have noticed there was a big big announcement at the beginning of EncounterCon uh, you'll find it as well over Twitter over Discord and you should join our Discord because this is where we recruit our players and where folks who haven't played in big campaigns, uh, who aren't Twitch streamers or anything like that, their chance as well. We have our meat grinders. Yesterday, the Fae grinder was a good fun. I got to kill so many people, more than Colin, which is what counts. Other Colin. <laughs> um, and we have our monthly charity games. We have our seasons with uh, regular faces, of course, well-known faces and always new folks. Um, so, you know, if, if anyone feels like joining the community on a slightly deeper level, deeper level, then please do join our Discord for that sort of stuff. And we will continue to bring all these wonderful games, all these wonderful storytellers to you directly. And I appreciate your joining in as well. Um, Yakuran, we do not play Warhammer, Warhammer 5e at the moment, and it's fairly unlikely that we are going to play anytime soon, because these sort of campaigns are usually campaigns, big level ones, and we try to keep our seasons at around 8 to 10 uh, episodes. Zweihander is a little bit similar to the system, though, so if you are interested in that, yes. then join our a man Colin C. Kelly down here later on today. I'll uh, post the schedule just now, uh, exclamation mark con. We have Zweihander one shot coming up later today uh, to check out the system to see if that maybe, maybe is something for you 
or we have on Fridays Shy over there in Wild and Chaotic. That is also a Zweihander campaign. Oh, we do very much appreciate Dan and all the guys from Zweihander. Anna's working with them as well. So, yeah, it's it's uh, using that tried system. It's a little bit on the on the chunkier, on the more mechanically uh, uh, elaborate side, but it still gives you a lot of room for storytelling for absolute chaos, which is I appreciate. And um, yeah, mm -hmm. you might you might want to try that. Have a look at that. We, um, like I said, had an announcement yesterday that Will is uh, trying his his luck and his expertise and his skills at new endeavors. So um, Will, who founded Encounter Roleplay originally many, many years back, is uh, leaving us. He was CEO for the last two years, uh, has already done lots of new things over in the States. And we now have Mitch Penny for a tale and mysterious Mr. Smith taking over with, of course, Charlie as our Twitch director uh, on Encounter Roleplay tags. Every time you interact with Encounter Roleplay, that is our overlady, Charlie. And uh, we're going to continue with our storytelling game. We're going to continue with uh, getting new people in, getting introducing new games, Kickstarter games, uh, longer campaigns. Um, it's It's been going well. I've been kind of swept up in this whole madness over the last year and uh <laughs> uh you can watch it shinobi you can, you can watch it all on youtube oh good good for that youtube and yeah it's fine you don't, you don't have to stay tuned 24 hours a day people mm -hmm. miss things but that's what the discord is for and you can always ask us as well you can also oh i can type you can also stop by there, ask any questions anytime. I'll be there as well. I'm Half Hour's Hermit. I'm Lydia. Uh, I do lots of things behind the scene for Encounter. I do a little bit of playing on Friday for Diesel Punks, which is a post apocalyptic type of Borderlands Mad Max uh, powered by the Apocalypse game. And I'm over on Cobalt Press as well every Monday with Deep Magic. Deep Magic is also chaos pure, pure chaos, magic chaos in particular, to introduce Cobalt Press's new Deep Magic supplement, which they kickstarted successfully. Of course they did. They're Cobalt Press. And I'm going to take a couple of, uh, of willing sacrifices onto a wild ride through the various magic spells and magic classes there. We also have our last episode coming up of GM Tips, Tricks and Tuesdays on Tuesday. Uh, both Deep Magic and that are at 1 p.m. Eastern uh, with Crime Nat, Nat and myself. We're going to hand out a few tips and advice for long-term GMs. And if you have your own advice to share, you're welcome to. Uh, after that, we have kind of finished with the format and we will uh, put that to rest because, you know, we end good things when they're still good. And that will be me for the week and for the coming months. So thank you so much, Anna, for GMing this absolutely fabulous game. I know it was your first time you GM'd Call of Cthulhu. How, how did you feel about it? Did, did, we do, did we do you justice? Oh my goodness. Y'all were amazing. I really, I really was very pleased with the crew that we got for this. Yeah, this is my first time DMing Call of Cthulhu. I've never even properly played it. I've like played in some weird pickup versions at like IRL cons before, but never actually had the true Call of Cthulhu experience with it. So, I mean, I thought it was phenomenal. Y'all really brought amazing RP skills and a great sense of fun. And also, you know, it was fun to scare you just a little bit. It was nice. <laughs> you smashed it. Oh, yeah. And I think oh, so had bad. several people for whom this was their first time playing Call of Cthulhu. We have all kinds of like resources in our Discord, like Lydia mentioned, for people that are new to RPGs or want to try out new systems. We have an entire channel that's just dedicated to like indie TTRPGs, solo RPGs, just all of the RPGs all the time. So definitely check that Discord out whether you are a player or a spectator or a GM, whatever you may be, if that sounds interesting, definitely go check that out. Um, oh boy, what do I have to plug? Uh, well, in addition to thanking these fabulous players and tech and um, <clears throat> our sponsors for this game, um, hello, I am Nymeria941 on all of the social medias if you would like to follow me there. Um, 
I am also going to be in a bunch of stuff on Encounter Roleplay uh, because this is where I live now, just in the machine. I play in the Star Trek game on Thursdays where we are an all Klingon crew going to retrieve our Sword of Chaos. And I will be uh, in the upcoming One Shot Wednesdays as well. We're going to do a fiasco at Sea game this week. It's going to be a chaotic, disastrously wonderful time, and I can't wait. Um, I'm also going to be starting GMing a new campaign early September on Wednesdays over on the Heroes Without Limits Twitch channel. That's a Twitch channel that is um, dedicated to amplifying disabled, chronically ill, and neurodivergent content creators online, especially within TTRPG. So I will be GMing with them for the first time, and we are playing City of Mist. We're playing a game called The Rough Magic that is very heavily inspired by Shakespeare and Irish Celtic folklore and mythology, and everybody's going to be playing as a person that has a real life myth or legend living inside of them. So if you like mythology, come check that out. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I think that is all that I have for you today. It Thank you all so much actually. for watching. Yeah. Yeah, you'll have to check it out. Yeah. I'll post an announcement. <laughs> yeah. Please do. And yeah. You can yes. follow us on our Twitters if you want. You can follow Encounter Roleplay, of course, if you haven't already, because you should. Uh, you can join our Patreon as well if you want to. We do have 100% of our Patreon proceedings and 50% of all donations we get during games go to the cast members. So we do make sure that our cast get some form of uh, fair compensation for all the time and all the effort they put into it. And some people put in a lot more effort than others, Anna, looking at you specifically with your A-plus wig game and all the things you do for the various <laughs> games, even the ones you're not playing in. So, because I have you here and because we have okay, Colin doing a Spy Hunter game, because we have Chai actually being in Wild and Chaotic, we're going to end on a little sea shanty that Anna actually composed for our Wild and Chaotic game. It was necessary it was a surprise for all of us and she floored us with it and we've been humming and singing it for the last two weeks so with the season we're saying goodbye and we're going to take you over from call of cthulhu to terra via the wild the good ship wild bye everyone thanks for joining bye bye Wild. Hoist your anchors with